There is a recent delivery of a five red hypers from Texas to Israel. Is it a sign of end times? Why is red hyper so important in Bible prophecy? What is the water purification ceremony? A perfect flawless red hyper is needed for that ceremony and what is that all about? Why is red hyper important to rebuild the temple in Israel? How is red hyper a shadow and type to the Messiah? To understand these topics in depth, stick with me in this entire story. Throughout almost 1900 years of an exile, every Jew is longing to return to the promised land that is Israel and want to build the third temple in the Jerusalem and want to reinstate the temple service. So Jews as a part of their daily prayers, they make this prayer every day. May the holy temple be rebuilt quickly and in our lifetime. After they got their independence in 1948, uh, Jews started uh, to work on this project aggressively. The Temple Institute, uh, which the, the institute that took the responsibility of rebuilding the, uh, the third temple, the founder and uh, the heading leader, the chairman, his name is Kaim Richman. So he gave an, a beautiful interview to the CBN channel in which he clearly stated that the preparation is almost done for the rebuilding the temple and he said that so the temple needs 60 sacred temple vessels and they are already created so these vessels are needed for the temple worship and also he said that uh, even the priestly garment okay so the priestly garments even they're ready and the priest breastplate which has the 12 precious stones even the breastplate is ready the musical instruments for the Levitical choir. So the choir needs the uh, musical instruments, right? So even the musical instruments are also ready. Also, he said that in 2010, uh, uncut stones were collected from the Dead Sea for the construction of the temple altar. So they cannot collect any stone to build the temple altar. So the temple altar is very, very important, sacred and holy. And God gave a clear command on how to build this temple altar. If you see Deuteronomy 27th chapter from verse 5 to 6. So the word of God says, There you shall build an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use an iron tool on them. So when you make these stones, when you bring these stones, so they must be very careful uh, in not using any iron tool. You shall build with whole stones the altar of the Lord your God. This is a clear command given in the Bible. They should not use the hammer. So they should have a stones, uncut stones, whole stones. So what is this stone pointing to? And this stone is pointing to our Messiah. Yeshua, Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the cornerstone, praise God. So the, the temple is built on this stone, praise God. Even the kingdom of God is built on the stone, on the rock called Jesus, praise God. Okay, so, and uh, the temple is destroyed over the period of time. So to rebuild the temple, they need the altar. The altar should be built with the uncut stone so in the 2010 in the year 2010 so they have collected these uncut stones from the dead sea and they have kept it ready for rebuilding the temple so almost everything is ready they have prepared everything for the temple now what is what more is required remember listen this very carefully the temple service can't begin can't begin they can't begin the temple service or construction without the paraduma 
okay this word might be new don't get confused okay don't worry so what is this paradhuma it is a hebrew word for the red heifer red heifer is very very important and essential for the construction of the third temple so what does a cow have to do with the rebuilding of the temple so for some it might be uh, difficult to believe that cow could be a uh, so important but in truth the entire world <laughs> depends on this red heifer the red cow why because god ordained that its ashes alone are the single missing ingredient for the reinstatement of the biblical purity and for the rebuilding of the holy temple so what is missing what is the missing ingredient to rebuild the temple it is the red heifer ashes of the red heifer so this we are going to learn into this topic so we are going to see what is red heifer and how it is sacrificed what is the water purification and how this red heifer is connected to the rebuilding of the temple and how this red heifer is pointing to yeshua messiah so without a delay let's get into this topic So before I begin today's class I want you to be ready with your book pen and bible if you don't have one please pause this video quickly go and grab your bible notes and pen and and journey with me we are going to see every minute detail connecting to this red heifer okay so this video is will be something unique because many people have already made several videos on red heifer especially the moment they heard about the five red heifers landed in ben gurion international airport in israel and many quickly started to make the videos so but few of my hebrew students they insisted me to make an in depth uh, video on this topic so i am here with a lot of information on the red heifer i am very sure that this topic is going to be a great blessing to you so stick with me uh, in this entire class you will be thoroughly blessed so why delay let's start do you know that red heifer uh, is connected to the end times and to the coming of the messianic era so it has a connection with the end times well the bible clearly prophesies about this so i'm going to present three prophecies prophesied by three major prophets in the bible first is ezekiel so if you see the 36th chapter from verse 24 to 25 the word of god says for i will take you out of the nations i will gather you from all the countries and bring you back to your own land okay so here god clearly promised that god is going to bring them back to the promised land in verse 25 then i will sprinkle clean water on you so what is this clean water notice this word clean water at this clean water is sprinkle over the people by whom by the priest the priest take the uh, pure water the clean water and they sprinkle over the people and that's how they become clean so when the unclean person come when unholy person come so the priest takes the holy water and sprinkle on them and then he says you are clean i will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols so back in those days when some person becomes uh, filthy by touch, either it could be touching the dead bodies or uh, it could be touching the idols okay there are many ways where they become uh, filthy so what what is god trying to say yes you have become filthy you have become unholy i am going to make you holy why by how i am going to sprinkle clean water over you okay so this clean water is connected to the red heifer let me quote the second prophecy from uh, another major prophet who is daniel okay if you see daniel 12th chapter verse 10 
and he said go your way daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end so daniel talks about the end times we all know that right so in the verse 10 many shall be many shall be purified many shall be purified made white and refined what is he talking about many shall be purified made white because they are unholy they are filthy they need to be purified and they need to be holy by what they need the holy waters or they need a clean waters that has the connection to the red heifer okay so let me show you another prophecy from another major prophet who is isaiah if you read isaiah first chapter verse 18 come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they are red like crimson they shall be as wool so what what is isaiah talking about he is inviting people back to god okay so there he the people have defiled they are unholy okay they have become filthy now god wants them to come back god says i am going to clean you i am going to make you white i am going to wash you i am going to make you holy so please come back to me so there is a clear prophecies that they need a clear uh, the clean water they need a red heifer through which they get the holy water and only by that they make the people clean okay don't worry i'm going to connect every dot so stick with me so most of the bible colleges most of the bible seminaries they teach about the uh, sacrificial system in the old testament okay so there are many types of offering sin offering thanksgiving offering grain offering okay there are many kinds of offerings but the sacrifice that we study now is completely different okay so where do we find about the red heifer yes if you read the book of numbers 19th chapter so this chapter is all about the law of red heifer so 19th chapter is called the law of red heifer so where the law is clearly mentioned about the red how to pick a red heifer okay what qualities need to be seen in the red heifer those details are clearly mentioned in the book of numbers 19th chapter so this chapter is one of the most significant yet least understood sacrificial law in the old testament okay so other sacrifice they could be understood very easily with a little explanation yes we can understand very easily but this is this stands as a most significant yet with the least understood people have very less understanding about this sacrifice this we are going to deal today so this is a powerful type and shadow of jesus christ so first we are going to see what is red heifer and how it is been sacrificed okay how it should be offered and also we are going to see how this red heifer is a type and shadow of jesus christ okay so if you have bibles so please open up your bibles to numbers 19th chapter we are going to read from verse 1 to 13 so this context speaks about the law of purification if someone becomes unholy someone is defiled according to their rituals so for them to be purified so there are certain laws given in this chapter okay so i'm going to read it for you so i want you to follow these verses now the lord spoke to moses and aaron saying this is the ordinance of the law which the lord has commanded saying speak to the children of israel that they bring you a red heifer or a red cow without blemish in which there is no defect and on which a yoke has never come so note this word red heifer or a red cow so what is the hebrew word for red heifer it is para aduma so what is para aduma the hebrew word for cow is para what is the hebrew word for cow it is para and what is aduma aduma is red remember adam okay what is adam adama so adam adam is red so dam 
So in this word, you have a word dam. So what is dam? Dam is blood. And what is blood? Blood is in red color. Adam. So Adam is taken from the Aduma. Aduma is a soil. So soil is in red. So Adama, God took Adama and he made Adam and he breathed a life into his nostrils. And that's how he has become a living soul. And he named him as, as he named him as an Adam. So what is Dam? Dam is blood. Adam is red. Edom. So why? The brother of Ishav, his name is Edom. Why? Because he is red. So what is Aduma? It is red. Para Aduma. So it is a okay red cow. Specifically, it is a young female cow. Okay. So the red heifer usually, generally, it is in a female cow. We are going to see that. So God clearly told them that they should take a red heifer and in order for that to be a, uh, eligible for the sacrifice they need to look for a few qualities what are what are those qualities the red heifer should be without blemish there should be no defect in it and uh, no one should ride on it that should be a new young uh, heifer no one should sit on it. No one should lean on it. Okay. And it should, no yoke should be laid on it. So when this criteria, when this red hyper match this criteria, then this is fit to be sacrificed. If this yoke, if this red hyper has a, a kind of a spots on its body, it is disqualified. And you know, the, the uh, Jewish uh, book says that if it has more than two red strands in his body that even that is disqualified so from the horns till uh, uh, till the hoof okay entire body should be in red okay even there should more there should be no defect if someone punches in their in their ear even that becomes defect not fit for the sacrifice now it is you know that when an, when an animal is born so there will be a tagging so a tag is punched on its ear okay so for the identification purpose even if that punch is there on the on its ear still it is called as a disqualified it should be perfect without any defect and not even yoke should be laid or no one should sit on it if someone sits on it even for a moment of time it is disqualified okay these are the qualities that need to be looked when picking up the red hyper for the sacrifice now Let's move on. Okay, so if you check the uh, Wikipedia, this is not just a red heifer because in our Bibles it, it only says about the red heifer, but the Jewish books say clearly says, and also if you check in the Wikipedia, it clearly says that it is a female cow, not a male. The red heifer that need to be sacrificed should be female and not male. Okay. For other sacrifices, you can take male or female. Okay, those sacrifices mentioned in the Bible. So, be it male or female, okay, that is considered. But for the red heifer, that should be a female. That's a clear sign. Okay, why is that? We are going to see that. Why God said red heifer? Why it should be completely red? We are going to see that. First, let us see uh, the clear law. Then we are going to see how it is applied and how we, we should understand the scriptures in the right perspective. Okay, verse 3. You shall give it to Eliezer the priest that he may take it outside the camp and it shall be slaughtered before him. Okay, so Eliezer was given this duty so that he can take it outside the camp. So where, is, where should this red heifer be slaughtered? Okay, that should be taken outside the camp. Usually the other sacrifices that are mentioned in the Old Testament. So when someone brings the sacrifice, that should be sacrificed. An animal or a bird, whatever that is being brought to the temple or to the tabernacle, that should be uh, killed at the 
uh, entrance of the tabernacle or the temple. See for example, check the Leviticus 17th chapter verse 5. The children of Israel may bring the sacrifice which they offer in the open field that they may bring them to the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. They should bring to the door of the tabernacle of the meeting to the priest and offer them as a peace offering. So generally these okay, animals are sacrificed at the door of the temple or the tabernacle. But here the red heifer should not be offered at the door of the temple or tabernacle. Rather it should be taken outside the camp. This is one more uniqueness of this sacrifice. The first uniqueness is this, this animal should be red complete from the horns to the hooves completely red. This is the first uniqueness. And the second uniqueness is this should be killed outside the camp, not inside the camp. Hope you are understanding. Hope you are taking down these points. This is very, very important. And verse 4, And Elias of the priest shall take some of its blood with his finger and sprinkle some of its blood seven times. Note this word, seven times directly in front of the tabernacle of the meeting. So if you see this picture, this is how they bring this red heifer outside the city, okay, where uh, it will have an altar there, okay. So on the altar, so uh, this animal is killed. So the high priest take this blood and you know, he look at the temple, okay, on the temple mount, he look straight. So uh, by looking at the temple, he takes this blood and he sprinkles for the seven times, seven talks about the perfection. Seven talks about the perfection, he sprinkles for the seven times. Okay. And in verse 5, then the heifer shall be burned. Okay. Not just sacrifice, the heifer should be burnt in his sight. Its hide, its flesh, its blood, and its Awful shall be burnt. Everything that is inside of this heifer should be burnt. Usually uh, when uh, we look at the other sacrifices, the skin is removed, okay? The flesh is taken out, okay? A part of it is taken out, a part of it will be burnt. But here the command is very clear, okay? That it's hide, flesh, even it's blood. Usually the blood is poured out, okay? So the life is in the blood. So the blood is poured out, but here even the blood should be burnt. This is the third uniqueness of this sacrifice. I want you to note down every small minute detail connecting to the red heifer because we are going to point this to the fulfillment who is Jesus Christ. Stay with me. Okay, verse 6. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of the fire burning the heifer. So uh, if you read the book of Leviticus where the leper need to be cleansed, usually the high priest, okay, the priest takes the cedar wood, his soap and scarlet. These elements are needed for the purification of the leper. Okay. So to proclaim him uh, uh, that he is healed or he is uh, completely out of his sickness. These elements are much needed. So the same elements are required even in this sacrifice. But the only difference is that he has to cast them into that burning fire. So along with the heifer, even these elements need to be burnt. So why the cedar wood, hyssop and scarlet? What they speak of, this we are going to see. Okay, even we are going to cover these elements. Okay, let's move on. In verse 7, then the priest shall wash his clothes. He shall, okay, bath in water and afterward he shall come into the camp. The priest shall be unclean until evening. Now I want you to notice one more uniqueness of this sacrifice. Usually, for example, let's take uh, the example of uh, the leper cleansing. The leper is unclean, right? So when someone is stuck with the leper, so if someone is approaching, the leper has to cover, cover, cover up his head, okay, cover himself and he has to shout unclean, unclean and unclean for three times. Why? 
because the one who is passing by should not touch this leper. If he touch this leper, even that person becomes unclean. So to this to be avoided, he has to cry out unclean, unclean and unclean. Okay. So if uh, he has to be clean, if he is healed, then he has to go to the, he has to show to the high priest. High priest does something, the ritual, uh, this thing has to, he'll do, uh, he'll do the ritual process and then he'll proclaim clean. Now get this. In this process, the priest will not become unclean, rather the leper becomes the clean. Okay, so in this ministry, the, the high priest, the one who is ministering, he will never be unclean. So there are a lot of people, they bring their sacrifices to the altar, the priest will sacrifice the altar. So the sacrifice will make atonement for those who has brought this sacrifice but the priest who is making the sacrifice he will not become unclean okay but in this sacrifice alone the priest will become unclean the priest himself become unclean until evening this is one uh, one more uniqueness another uniqueness of this sacrifice Okay, I know that most of the people you might be hearing this for the first time. We are going to see uh, what exactly and how they are pointing to Christ. And verse 9. Then a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and store them outside the camp in a clean place. And they shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for the water of purification. Notice this word, water of purification. Okay, so once uh, after this red hyper is burned into the ashes, okay, the, uh, a person, okay, uh, a dedicated person for this, on this job, he is supposed to collect the ashes, okay, and he should store it in a, outside the camp, there will be a place outside the camp, so uh, outside the camp in a safe place, in a clean place, he has to store these ashes in a pot or in a vessel, okay. So why this stored? This is stored for the congregation of Israel. Why? Because it is used as a water of purification. It is for purifying from sin. If someone needs to be purified, so they take this ashes, okay, a pinch of it might be, they will mix it in a water and they will sprinkle on people. And that's how they become clean, ceremonially clean. Okay, get this. They burn the red heifer. Okay, they take the ashes of it and they'll store it in a jar which is kept outside the city in a clean place. They take part of it and mix it in water and then use it for uh, purifying the sins. So, this is a water of purification. What is this? This is called the water of purification. Okay, verse 10 And the one who gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes. And be unclean until evening. It shall be a statue forever. So this command is for for how long? For ever, not for the particular period of time. Okay, not for the particular uh, time period. This will be forever. I want you to understand this. Okay, forever to the children of Israel and to the strangers who dwell among them. Okay, this is not done, done away. Okay, still Jews practice this. Okay, this statue is forever. Verse 13, whoever touches the body of anyone who has died and does not purify himself, defies the tabernacle. So, if, if a priest is ministering to someone who is unclean or if someone uh, accidentally touches the dead or he comes under the roof where a dead person, a body of a dead person is lying down, he becomes, okay, uh, even he becomes impure, defiled and if he comes and touches the tabernacle and he defiles the tabernacle, okay, such person will be cut off from Israel. A impure person cannot defile the tabernacle, such person will be cut off. So, on, so he has to clean himself. He shall be unclean because the water of purification was not sprinkled. What happened? When the water is not sprinkled on that person, he is not holy, he is not clean. His unclean, uncleanliness is still on him, though he has offered a sacrifice. But if the water is not poured on his head, okay, he is unclean. 
So he cannot defile the tabernacle. So not only this uh, purif the water of purification is used for the congregation of Israel, even the priest. So he needed it for himself because even he is unclean, right? So even he needed it for himself and he needed it for, uh, no, uh, uh, for uh, purifying the utensils of the tabernacle. For the temple service, even that is much needed for himself, for the people and for the tabernacle or for the temple. This uh, water purification is must and should, without which he becomes unholy. If unholy tries to serve at the temple, then he is cut off from the Israel and there is a severe punishment. Now you, you got this, uh, now you understand the importance of this water of purification, how this water of purification is made from, it is made from the ashes of the red heifer. Okay, so these are the laws regarding the red heifer. So let me brief once again. Let me tell you the uniqueness of this sacrifice before I point them to the fulfillment. Okay, so this sacrifice has four uniqueness. Number one, it was the only animal sacrifice that specifically require an animal of a particular color. So this is the only sacrifice. That should be in complete red. The second uniqueness, okay. So it was the only sacrifice where all rituals were carried outside the camp, not inside the camp. Second uniqueness. And third uniqueness, it was only sacrifice that ritually contaminated the priest who offered it, but made the one who has sprinkled it by clean. So when he sprinkles, that person become clean. But he, because he is pouring that water, he becomes unclean. This is a third uniqueness. And fourth uniqueness is, it was only sacrifice where the ashes were preserved and used. Ashes are not thrown away. But other sacrifices required that ashes be disposed outside the camp. So when it comes to other sacrifices, when there is a burnt sacrifices, so when the ashes are left, so they have to be uh, carried out outside the camp and that should be disposed that's the uh, that need not be stored but here this ashes of the red heifer need to be stored outside the camp in a clean place these are the four uniqueness of the red heifer hope you are taking a good notes okay if you are my speed so you can pause this video take every detail of these points Okay, make sure that you are able to understand this concept. Praise God. Good. Now, do we find about this holy water or pure water anywhere in the New Testament? Yes, we will find it in the book of Hebrews 10th chapter verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscious and our bodies washed with pure water. Now you now you understand the depth of this word. So what is this washing with washing with the pure water? It has connect, connect connection to this water that we are learning from the book of Numbers. Okay. Now so we understood that red heifer with uh, the given okay instructions is needed uh, to offer as an, a sacrifice. But is this red hyper source case? Yes. They are rarely found. Okay, they are rarely found. So Jewish tradition says that there are nine red hyphers. Parat Hadumot. So Parot Hadumot. Para is a single, which is a cow. Parot Ot is a plural. Parot Hadu Mot, okay, Ot is a plural. So there are total nine red hyphers offered so far on behalf of Jewish people. So since from the time of Moses, okay, there are only nine red hyphers are sacrificed. Only nine. Just now imagine how rare these red hyphers are found. Okay, so the Jewish tradition says uh, uh, this way that. The first red hyper was offered by the 
Moses and Eliezer that we already read in the book of Numbers. And uh, one more red heifer was offered by Ezra the scribe. Okay, these uh, information are collected from the Jewish books, okay, from the traditional books. And uh, two more red heifers were offered by Simon the righteous. And two more were offered by the Johanna the high priest, John the high priest, Johannan. And uh, one more is offered by prophet Eliza. And uh, one, one is offered by Hanamel the Egyptian. So he offered that red heifer. And don't ask me where is in the Bible. So this I collected from their Jewish, uh, this thing, traditional books. That's what they believe, okay. And just this is for your side note. And one more is asked, uh, offered by Ishmael, the son of Piab, which is between 15 to 60 AD. But Jewish uh, books clearly says that, according to the Jewish tradition, the tenth and final red heifer will be burned by the Messiah. Messiah at the time of rebuilding of the temple. So what does it? What does the their book say? The tenth heifer, tenth will be the last and final red heifer, which will be offered by the Messiah, and that too at the time of rebuilding the temple. So Jews believe that yes, Jesus, the Messiah is going to come back. Okay, at the time of the rebuilding of the temple. So they don't believe that Jesus came uh, came in the year, uh, 2000 years back. So they don't believe Jesus as their Messiah. Because for the, because to, uh, according to their understanding, Messiah has no defeat or death. He cannot be defeated. He will all throw the kingdoms and kings. He cannot die. He cannot be defeated. But here Jesus, he died and he is buried. So that's why they don't believe him as a messiah. So they wait for the return of the messiah and messiah sacrifices the tenth and final red heifer. So when was the last red heifer uh, offered? That's uh, during the time of Jesus. During the time of Jesus, that was the last time the red heifer was offered during the period of Jesus. Not, we don't know the exact date and the year, but that was roughly that was a time period where the last red heifer was offered. Since then, and uh, not even one red heifer was found. Okay. So what happened? For almost two thousand years, because there is no red heifer, there is no uh, holy water, other or pure water. If there is no holy water or pure water, what happens? And Jews are unclean. Now just imagine for 2000 years, there is no temple, temple is destroyed. Okay, temple is destroyed. And in, in these 2000 years, everyone touched their, yes, uh, the dead, the carry the dead corpse, they become defiled, they become impure. So technically, ceremonially, every Jew is unclean right now okay let me repeat this all the Jews born from the time of destruction of the temple until this time every Jew are ceremonially unclean ceremonially unclean so they need to be cleansed before they begin this temple they need this uh, holy water they need this pure water now they are technical and clean because we learned that if a person is unclean and if he get into the temple service he is defiling the tabernacle and he will be cut off from the Israel now tell me what is needed for the temple service that is red hyper is needed and it is not found for almost 2000 years they are longing they are waiting for this red hyper when it is going to appear and it is not it is uncommon okay to find such red heifer without a blemish without a spot without uh, any kind of punch in their ears okay and uh, no one should ride on it perfect red completely red cow they're waiting and waiting so listen this very carefully so in this 2000 period of time they have identified two possible heifers. 
in two different times. So one was found in the year 1999 and they are so happy that they found the red typhoon and there was a big viral, the news has become so viral and was so happy that because now it is a sign that it is a time to rebuild the tabernacle, they rebuild the temple. So what is a sign for them to that uh, it is the right time to build the temple? Red heifer is a sign. Because they didn't find this red heifer so long, they thought that okay, it's not the right time. So it's not the right time, so we have to wait for it. So they are waiting for the heifer. And 1999 they found the red heifer, that was a clear sign for them to go forward uh, for the temple construction. But you know when they examine, when they scrutinize it, when they examine the red heifer, it is disqualified. Why? Because it is a male. According to the instructions, according to the law, red heifer, the sacrificial red heifer should be female. Remember? But this is male. That is a point. Again, they started to work on this project. The second one was found in the year 2002. Now this time they were so happy. Now they have found the female red heifer. They are so excited. But when the Temple Institute and the expert when they started to examine whether it fits for the sacrifice, they found that they have a small patch of white hair on it. A small patch of white hair. Everything is perfect except a small patch of white hair. And again they disappointed. Twice they have identified and they have disappointed. You know why? Because that is very much needed for the sacrifice. And they started to work on this red heifer. Okay, so technically they are started to work on it. They are working with the ranchers. So they were Jewish Christian ranchers. So uh, they, they are in Texas. So they are in correct uh, uh, contact with the Temple Institute in Israel. So these ranchers in Texas, so they raise his cattle, especially the cows. And these uh, Christian Zionists, so they believe, even they, they understood the prophecy on the importance of the red hyper. They even they tried their best to you know uh, uh, to bring this red hive for, for this project, and something has happened after years of struggle. Okay, again they heard a very good news that on September 16, 2022, uh, five red hivers landed in Israel at Ben Gurion's airport. So the rancher in the Texas, I am not going into much detail about who is this rancher, who is this farmer, how this, uh, this uh, temple is got in contact with them and how, I am not going into much detail. But he gave the information that five red, uh, red hyphers are born one year old. All these red hyphers are one year old. Immediately this temple institute, they have sent an experts, so they, they, they flew to the Texas. They examined, again they were so happy and uh, they brought this red five hyphers, okay, which is which are of one year old. They flew them back to the Israel and this red high five, uh, five hyphers landed on September 6, 2022, that is at the time of this uh, shooting this video. So now perhaps you understood why Jews around the world are so excited about this news. Okay, they got his fire at Hyphus. Now, the next thing is they have to meet the rabbinical standards. So, they have standards to meet, right, for them to sacrifice. One is, so the cow must not have, must not have more than two non-red hairs. More than two non-red hairs, number one. Number two, there should be no punching on its ear, usually in America, so when a cat is born, they, they punch their ears with a tag. But there should not be no punching, there should be no defect. And uh, once the criteria is met, then they are fit for the, uh, for the sacrifice. So as of now, uh, now these five red hyphers are raised in Israel and will be inspected and will be prepared for possible sacrifice. And that happens. When these red hyphers, which are of one year old, when they reach two years, one day old. 
okay that's when they are going to sacrifice this red heifers if they meet this rabbinical stand rabbi standards okay so we don't know what holds in future what happen after the examination of the ins inspection of the preparation okay and some uh, maybe sometimes you know the cattle sometimes they they grow sick so if everything falls in line in perfection then they'll be ready for the sacrifice okay so we'll wait and see what happens in the future but now we'll focus how this red heifer is pointing to our yeshua messiah our lord jesus christ okay so let's compare these details to the christ we we'll see the shadow and we're going to see the fulfillment okay number one so according to the rabbi traditions according to the jewish uh, books when they find this red heifer they should not drag it forcefully outside the camp according to the mishnah okay the priest should bring her forth by herself he should not drag it forcefully outside the city okay he should not compel to leave the city okay go drag it somehow making it to go away from the temple uh, this thing temple mount or that place no uh, especially the place of this sacrifice sac the place or where this uh, red high priest sacrifice is on somewhere on the mount olives which is uh, towards the eastern gate if you look at the map i'm going to show you uh, towards this gate so they pass through this gate and they go to the place uh, some particular place on mount olive there they built an altar and that's where they sacrifice this red heifer now we have a beautiful uh, this thing uh, parallel here even jesus he is our red heifer so he is a substitute for us he is didn't went to the cross forcefully he laid down his life for us okay happily joyfully without any force he was not compelled he voluntarily went to the mount olives he knew that when he is going to die he knew that when on an exact date where he will be crucified okay and he knew that the cup of bitterness ready so he have to he has to drink from it he voluntarily went to the mount olives he voluntarily went to the upper room sat with the disciples and had the last supper he voluntarily crossed the kidron valley and he entered into the garden of gethsemane no one forced him did, did, did someone force him no the disciples was with him but disciple has no clue and the disciples were sleeping all the time and jesus was praying jesus himself came and woke his disciples can't you pray so he volunteered himself in giving his life for us praise god in fact people say that okay uh, uh, the roman skill or jew skill please understand that of course they were an instruments uh, for his sacrifice on the cross but remember jesus gave himself on the cross okay he he has laid down his life voluntarily now this point and another another parallel okay another parallel is like i want to see the location typology okay so this red heifer was performed directly east of the temple of the mount of olives so where is this performed I, as i said it is taken through the eastern gate or uh, mikpath gate there are two gates side by side so th by the way you know the 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 temple jerusalem has many gates 12 gates and i have made a video of course at the time of shooting i made this uh, teaching on, in telugu about the 10 gates of israel 10 gates of jerusalem and every gate speaks about a different phase in a believer's life so if you have watched that video so i'm a, uh, i'm i'm uh, giving a link in the description box so please kindly go and check the 10 gates i have given the clear map the location of that each and uh, every gate okay so that will that teaching will be a great helpful to you so this gate so they have to pass through this gate and uh, they should be offered on the olives so if i I'm, i'm just displaying the uh, the scripture or the portion from the mishnah 
the causeway was made from the temple mount to the mount of olives to the mount of olives okay so this is uh, this is what it is mentioned in the mishnah okay so yeah can you see this this is the eastern gate this is a mikpath gate and uh, here is the mount olives at the bottom of that mount is the garden of gethsemane okay so if you are going to the israel you must have a thorough understanding about the map of this uh, temple mount the gates so now a lot of uh, uh, many gates name has changed but these names that i have taught uh, in this teaching is uh, taken from the book of nehemiah okay fine let's come to the point so it is taken outside and there it is sacrificed now let's go, let's let's check numbers 19 verse 3 you shall give it to the elias of thy priest that he may take it outside the camp and it shall be slaughtered before him remember this word outside the camp okay praise god even jesus was crucified outside the city gates book of hebrews 13th chapter verse 11 to 12 for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned are burned outside the camp therefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate where did jesus suffer he suffered outside the gate so red heifer is a typology red heifer is a type of he suffered outside the gate. He is a fulfillment of this red heifer. Okay, second point. Red heifer should be without blemish as discussed in verse 2. Okay, a red heifer should be without blemish. If it has a blemish, it is disqualified. The same way, our Savior Jesus is also sinless. If you read 2 Corinthians 5th chapter verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin. He never sinned. There is no sin in his life. Praise God. He is a sinless man. That's why he is a, a perfect sacrifice. In fact, even John, uh, Jesus challenged the religious leaders in John 8 chapter verse 46. Which of you convicts me of sin? He is throwing a challenge. Now prove me that I have a sin. Prove me that there is a sin in me. He threw a challenge. No one was daring to take up the challenge. Because there is no sin in his life. In fact, when he was arrested and when, when he was uh, taken before the pilot, Pilate examined him and he confessed. In Luke 23rd chapter verse 4. So Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no fault in this man. The, the non-Christian, non-Jew, he is a non-Jew, he is a non-Christian, whatever it is. He, is, he don't believe in Jehovah, he is not a part of a Judaism. Okay, The one who knew, who never knew the true God, he himself as a king over the Jews, he gives a clear statement that I find no fault in this man. A non-Jew is certifying that he has no fault. So the Jews, the, the people, the Jewish leaders were instigating, okay, provoking the people that ask Jesus to crucify, ask Pilate to crucify Jesus. And these blind people that are asking the life of Jesus. Every, everyone is trying to, okay, uh, asking the Pilate to crucify him. They are trying to bring some accusations. But now, None of their accusations stood before Jesus. And Pilate knew that all the accusations are wrong. Here the Jews are trying to kill Jesus. But here the non-Jew, okay, a Roman king is trying to save Jesus. So those who have the law, those who understood the prophecies, those who serve the true God, they are trying to kill Jesus. Those who don't have a law, those who never understood, no, no, uh, never knew the true God, now he's trying to save Jesus. See <laughs> the difference. Jesus has no law.
That's why, that's why he is a perfect sacrifice. If there is one sin in him, he cannot be a perfect sacrifice. We serve a God who is a perfect sacrifice. If there is one sin, then he will become a sinner. A sinner cannot die for another sinner. Right? And even if he dies, the sacrifice has no meaning. Jesus is a sinless man. Praise God. Now let us see the elements involved in sacrificing this red heifer. If from Numbers 19 to chapter verse 6, cedar wood, soap and scarlet, these elements are required and that will be thrown in the fire along with the red heifer, right? So what, why is cedar wood? What does it represent? What is hyssop representing and what is scarlet represent? So the cedar tree, the wood of the cedar tree, this wood is renowned for its ability to preserve things from decay and corruption. This wood will not be corrupted. It will not be decayed. It will not be corrupted. This is a uniqueness of, uh, of this cedar tree. Praise God. So this will preserve things. So when something is kept along with the cedar, the cedar wood, so it will prevent from decaying. It will prevent from the corruption. Praise God. Christ is the cedar wood because he is incorruptible. Though he is buried for three days, he rose back to life. Okay. He is incorruptible. And not only is in, he is incorruptible, so when we serve him, when we give our life to Jesus, and what, is the, what, what will Christ do? He will preserve us from the physical decay and the spiritual decay. Praise God. Not only will preserve our bodies, praise God, one day is going to come back. And the dead in Christ will raise back. So there is no decay for the Christians. He will preserve our physical body, even our body is important to him. Okay. So he rose back to life in the physical form. His body didn't decay. The same way, even our bodies will not decay. Uh, though for the moment of time, our body might be buried. But one day, this body will not decay, it will come back to life. Also, he will preserve from the spiritual corruption. When Christ comes, enters into our lives, there is no spiritual corruption. There is no spiritual uh, decay in our lives. Stinkiness. A lot of people, many lives without Christ are stinking. Yes. But what, are, what would Christ do? When Christ enters, he cleans our inner man. He will clean our conscience. He will clean our emotions, our will, intellect. He cleans us everything inside of us. We will be spiritually decay free when Christ enters. Thank God for the Sedar wood. Christ is the Sedar wood. Amen. Now, let's see the second element. The hyssop. Hyssop is a kind of herb which is used for the purification. So, it is like a cleansing agent. So they take this hyssop, dip in the blood and they sprinkle it. Okay. So that is used for the uh, ritual cleansing. So it carries, uh, it is a symbol of purification. It is a symbol of purifications. Right. So uh, that's why even David, uh, he says that, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than the snow. Praise God. So, his soap is a physical, it's a cleansing agent. It is a symbol of purification. So, what is his soap? His soap is Christ. And what does the Christ do when we go to Christ? So, he will not only preserve our body and preserve our inner man, so preserve our spiritual life. Also, he cleanses. Christ has ability to purge us from the sin and to wash us clean through the power of his atonement. Praise God. He will cleanse and he will purge our sins. He will make us clean and white. He will make us pure. He will make us clean. Thank God for this divine his soul. There is no one in this world who can cleanse you from your unholiness. There is no one else in this world who can atone your sins. Only Christ and Christ alone. Glory to God. Amen. And third element. And third element is the scarlet. The scarlet 
is in red color okay so how do we get this scarlet okay so the jewish rabbis they say that this the scarlet was obtained uh, back in the ancient okay back in those ancient days this scarlet was obtained by crushing a worm found in an oak tree okay there are many oak trees even if you go to the garden of getsemane in israel so there are there will be many oak trees so there will be a kind of a worm in the oak trees back in those days they take this worm they crush it through which they get this scarlet okay which is in red so this uh, even this is pointing to christ so even this element is a symbol relating to christ how is that number 1 the first is because the scarlet is red okay so red reminds about the blood and blood reminds about the life because bible clearly says that in leviticus 17:11 life is in the blood so what is scarlet scarlet speaks of the blood and life praise god so how do we how do that blood and life is given because when the worm is crushed now that the blood comes out a scarlet comes out the blood comes out the life comes out in the same way the same way uh, if you remember this uh, uh, prophetic word in sam 22 verse 6 but i am a worm and no man a reproach of men and despised of the people so this is a prophecy of christ so even christ was crushed like a worm on the cross so the like, usually worm so people just they, they, they just crush easily so christ was crushed like that he was trampled crushed squeezed wounded and he was bleeding from head to the toe he was just bleeding and there's a blood is oozing out praise god so this was prophesied that christ will be treated like a worm crushed by his people until he becomes as red as a scarlet by the blood he sheds thank god so all these three elements are pointing to christ number one he is a cedar wood yes he will never decay our body and our spiritual inner man number two so he is our hisop he cleanses and he washes and he will purge us and he is our scarlet where he gives his life so that we will have a life he dies so that we get life praise god so what a beautiful typology in these three elements okay let's move on now uh, if you remember that in numbers 19th chapter was 7 what happens the high priest after offering the red heifer he becomes unclean until evening he becomes unclean he didn't do anything okay he is a he is a nice guy he is a clean person but he has offered this this red heifer because of which he has become uh, unclean he has become unclean till evening but when he sprinkles the water on people they become clean but he he becomes unclean same this is a beautiful parallel to christ jesus he is made sin second corinthians 5th chapter verse 21 for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so jesus is our high priest he is our high priest right and he is made sin he never knew any sin he is not a sinner but he is made sin for whom for us he took our sins upon him by taking our sins upon him he laid down his life on the cross and he died praise god the perfect savior who has no guilt sin in his life that savior so holy so righteous he was made sin by his sacrifice praise god he was he has made sin so that we get we become holy we become righteous what happened at the cross as a sinner when we go to the cross he take our unholiness and he gives his holiness he takes our unrighteousness and he gives his righteousness he take our standing 
and he gives his standing before the father there was a divine exchange that happening at the cross as a believer you need to understand what happens at the cross when you meet christ please have understanding what's hap what's happening in the spiritual realm when you are coming to meet jesus at the cross don't be so religious okay don't be so traditional carried away by just by ritual things have a spiritual understanding what's happening in the spirit realm he may, he was made he is made as a sin for you as if we did all those things as if we committed all all kind of this nonsense things he took it upon himself he became clean the high priest with a beautiful dress white robe did you see the dress of the high priest so royal garments with a helmet on his head with a so beautiful garments white garments yet he is unclean till evening praise god what a beautiful fulfillment so when christ is dying on the cross many people think that jesus is dying as an a sinner as an a criminal no don't look from the outward perspective look what's happening in the spirit realm is offering the sacrifice as a high priest is offering the sacrifices his own life he is the red heifer and he is a high priest so bible says red heifer so top to bottom everything should be red when christ was hanging on the cross he is bleeding from the head to the toe completely red he is that red heifer on the cross red heifer praise god learning something learning something yes also the sprinkling makes unclean clean if you read numbers 19 to chapter verse if you read numbers 9 to chapter verse 13 okay he shall be unclean because the water of purification was not sprinkled on him so what happened so when someone comes unclean person comes so when the water is sprinkled on his head or on him that's when he becomes clean if there's no if, if if the water is not sprinkled when i say water not any water water in which the ash of the red heifer is mixed when that is sprinkled on him he becomes clean why that person is become clean because he was supposed to die unclean impure okay so that person is supposed to die but a red heifer died on his place red heifer died sacrificed burned into ashes so by sprinkling the water what does it mean that you need not die someone else died for you praise god what a beautiful picture someone died made it to the ashes and that's that's why you are if you read first peter first chapter verse 2 bible talks about the new testament talks about the sprinkling of the blood okay for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ so what happen when we go to cross jesus sprinkles his blood on us saying that you are holy you are clean and you are righteous glory to god we are not clean by our righteous deeds are are we we are not righteous by our actions are we no because he sprinkled the blood upon us we are called holy and righteous and when he sprinkled his blood what is it what does it mean you need not die i die for you your justification your holiness your righteousness is attained not on not by your death but by my death because i meet the requirements given in the law if you read hebrews 12th chapter verse 24 to jesus the mediator of the law new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better than better things than that of abel do you know the blood speaks so when the blood is sprinkling okay what happen the blood speaks so when the blood is sprinkled on you the blood is speaking that atonement of this person is done atonement for this person is done 
Yes, the death has taken place. Now he is free. Praise God. So when there is a blood over us, the blood is speaking to the enemy. That enemy, you don't have a, a authority or right over this person because death already took, took place. As for the Bible, the one who sins has to die. But when the blood is pleaded on a person's life, his person is saved. That life is saved. Why? Because the blood is applied. The blood comes because of the death that, uh, that has been killed. Okay. The sacrifice, the atonement is done. So we Christians, we simply say, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Without any understanding what the blood do. Uh, people simply chant blood of Jesus. Simply chant without any understanding or without any kind of knowledge about the blood of Jesus. The blood speaks, my dear uh, beloved, my dear brother and sister, the blood that is sprinkled over you, the blood speaks for you every day. That is why it is very important to come under the blood of Jesus every day. That is a hedge around you, that is a fence around you, that enemy cannot enter into your life. Enemy try to bring a disease or a death to you, but the blood on you, you will not speak, but the blood on you will speak that. Atonement is done, death has no entry. This is what happened even at the, at the time of pass, first Passover, when the blood is applied on the doorpost, the angel of death entered into the camp. When, 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 uh, when, it saw, when he saw the blood applied on the doorpost, he passed over. Why? Because the blood says that the death already took place. You need not enter. Angel of death, why waste of time? The death already took place. Better go to the next, next house. Angel passed. How did the death take place? The people, the house, the people in the house, they didn't die. Instead of for them, a lamb died, the blood is applied. So we, when it went to the Egyptian house, there is no blood applied on the doorpost. That means no death took place. That's why angel of death entered in and he killed the first one. Praise God. Thank God that every time we go to Jesus, he'll sprinkle his blood on us and he says, you are clean. You are free from filthiness. You are righteous. You are holy. Praise God. Amen. So I have already taught about the righteous and holiness in one of my Hebrew classes. Those copies are available in my YouTube channel. If you do not know how you are made holy and righteous, please understand this. People have wrong, wrong uh, assumption, wrong idea about the holiness and the uh, righteous because they link that with their deeds and actions. That's how they get confused and they think that they are sinners. So when the sin is operating on, on, in, in your life and uh, the law has a power to control you, where there is a law, even the enemy, the death and enemy has control over you. Don't allow the law to control over you. Okay. So what is the power of the law? Sin. When you, when you operate under the law, the law that speaks about the do's actions. So when the law controls you, what is the power of the law? Sin. The sin controls you. When sin controls you, who has the dominion? The enemy, the Satan has control over you. Please don't do that. So after this video, please go and watch what is holiness and what is righteousness. Even I am providing those links in the description box. Please watch that thoroughly and get a good understanding of that. Amen? Praise God. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. And I mentioned that the rest red heifer, the sacrificial red heifer should be a female and not male. Okay. Even this is one, one more uniqueness of this sacrifice. Okay. A marvelous message is manifested in this metaphor. I want you to understand this. What is this female? Usually female sacrifice. What does a female sacrifice suggest? It suggests that the ritual is life-giving. Female is a life-giving, right? Female is a life-giving. So through women, we are born and gain a mortal life, right? But through Christ, what's happening? We become spiritually born and gain the eternal life. What happened when you go to the red hyper called Christ? So when you go to red heifer, the red heifer, female red heifer says that 
Yes, you have come to me. I am going to give you the eternal life. I am going to give you the life. What life? We are already born, right? We are already born. We have a mortal life. What we need is an immortal life. We need the life. We need an eternal life. By going to the Christ, the red heifer, he gives us the eternal life. Praise God. That's why uh, Jesus said in the book of John that I have come that they might have a life. Why? Because Jesus is the red heifer. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So, Jesus gives us the eternal life. So, he gives us the eternal life. Now, let, me, let me tell you one thing. Listen very, very carefully. Without this purif uh, uh, purification of water, uh, that person cannot have a holy, he cannot become ritually clean person, number one. Number two, a female red hyper is involved, that means a life giving. So by sprinkling the water, what, what does it mean? He has another, an, it is like getting another life back. Why? Because if that water is not sprinkled, he is cut off and he is dead and gone. When the water is sprinkled, that means he has got another life to live, second chance. So when you come to the Christ called the Red Hyper, what does he do? He gives you the eternal life. By why? By how? Because of his death. See, your eternal life is not just given that freely. The price is paid. The price is paid. His death is bringing us life. That female Red Hyper died. So that's how we got the life. That's the reason Jesus clearly said in John 14.6 that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. No one can come to the Father except through me. Why did he say that? Because he said, I am the red hyper. You may bring any, any, you may offer any sacrifice that doesn't make you clean. You may take any hyper that doesn't make you clean. Only red hyper that meets the requirements mentioned in numbers. So now tell me, who else has met that requirement in this world? Except Jesus. Only he met those requirements. That's why only he can give you the eternal life. Only through him you can meet the Father. There is no other way. Only when the water is sprinkled, only then he can enter into the temple and he can have a fellowship with God. Else is cut off. Without the sprinkling of the holy water, pure, water of purification, one cannot enter or one cannot serve in the temple. This is very, very important. So, what makes us to stand before Father? It is heavenly red hyper. Thank God for the red hyper. Thank God for his sacrifice. Thank, for, thank God for his okay, uh, uh, laying down his life voluntarily. Praise God. Okay, before I conclude, I wanted to tell this, uh, which is very, very important, I wanted to understand. So in the Old Testament, when people come, so the priest takes the water purification, they sprinkle on people's on people. Now, yes, they are pure. For how long? How long they are pure? Are they pure forever? Okay. Are they free forever? No. Only for a period of time. Only for a period of time. Again, if they have become impure, again they have come, they should come back. Again, they should meet the priest. And the priest has to sprinkle uh, the water of purification on them. So that's the reason, uh, no, uh, in the, uh, if you see the tabernacle, uh, especially in the outer court way, the brazen altar on which the sacrifices are offered, all the time when the priest is ministering at the altar, you will not see him sitting. You don't find priest sitting at the altar. Always he stands. Always he stands. And you don't find even a stool, <laughs> especially in our churches, so on the stage. So at least we'll have some sofas and chairs so that pastor can sit for a moment of time at least until the testimonies are given, until, until the offering, offerings are taken. At least pastor can relax for a moment of time. But in the tabernacle, the outer court, there's no such shades. Okay, from the time he begins his ministry there till he get down from his service, he has to stand and there is no other option. What does it mean? Hebrews 10 chapter verse 1. 
the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow. So whatever the sacrifices that are mentioned in the old system, be it any sacrifice, even the red hyphus sacrifice, is a shadow, right? It's a shadow. And it's a shadow, a dim preview. It's just a preview of the good things to come. I'm, I'm reading from the NIV translation. <laughs> it's a preview of good things to come, not the good things themselves. Okay. The sacrifice under the, that system were repeated again and again. Why you don't see it? Because once he sacrifice, okay, again someone else come, again he has to sprinkle. Again, uh, by the time he goes, again someone else come. That ministry continues again and again. It's repeated again and again, year after year. So every time they have they have to get the right type of and every time, for every year, they have to give a sacrifice during the atonement, M Kippur. But even that is, even if that is done, they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who come to worship. That only for a moment of time, that covers that person, but that will not that will not give you, that will not give him the cleansing. So, Old Testament sacrifices covers the sin, but New Testament sacrifice cleanses the sin. Old Testament sacrifice, Bible clearly says, it does not provide perfect cleansing. That's why every time priest keep, should keep on standing and uh, serve at the altar. Now, our high priest, right, he is our high priest. Now, I, 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 want, I will show you one scripture. I want you to Note this particular word, Hebrews 10th chapter verse 12. But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of God. Sat down. Now tell me, is our high priest sitting or standing? He is sitting at the right hand. He sat down. What does it mean? That means he offered once for all. There is no standing up again and offering again under sacrifice. Praise God. He is sitting at the right hand. That means the sacrifice is done. It's over. There is another sacrifice. Many times we read this word. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. If the high priest, he is not supposed to sit, right? He should keep on ministering. But he sat, that means. When do we sit? So whole day we work and come back home and we sit and relax. That means when we sit, that means the work is done. Praise God. Jesus sacrificed his life and he shed his blood and his sacrifice is complete. Through his blood, we are holy. Praise God. Now tell me, who is this red heifer? Our Jesus himself. So, we need not wait for the red hyper like Jews, okay, uh, waiting for the red hyper to build the tabernacle. Of course, that has connection to do with the third temple. But our red hyper is Jesus Himself, and He's going to come back one day for us. Amen. So now, do you understand the connection between the red hyper and the temple? Okay. Why Jews are waiting for the red hyper? Why is it important? Why it is burned into the ashes? and how the purification of water is made and what are the qualities that one to need to look for the red hyper okay they're still in the leave in the shadow yes god has his way of dealing with the jews and he has his own way of dealing with the gentiles he deals both separately individually and separately okay praise god so our red hyper is jesus himself that, that doesn't mean that we should stop looking at what's happening in israel have an eye so often please uh, time again and again have a eye on what's happening in the Israel, what's going around. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel so that I keep posting all these updates. It will be very easy for your study. Okay, so if you are blessed by this uh, video, so uh, I would like to hear your feedback in the comments, comment box. Okay, so post your comment in the comment box also if you have any questions so please post it there i'll try to answer it okay also try to share this video to your contacts or your friends okay so they so that they'll have a deep understanding of this okay thank you 
uh, thank you for watching this entire video god bless you abundantly so in the next video we'll catch up with another topic stay blessed